Well, welcome back, and today we're going to be looking at just a short part of Chapter 9, and that's talent development uh, and leadership development. And what we're going to be looking at is how organizations prepare people for the future, especially within the organization to take on positions of higher authority. Many times organizations get wrapped up in having to react to what the employees are doing. Uh, with succession planning and talent development and so forth. Here we're being proactive by preparing the people for the future, for the inevitability of transfers and uh, them going to uh, um, other places through retirement, through uh, uh, layoffs and so forth. So today let's take a look just very briefly at Chapter 9 as we look at talent development. Welcome back everybody and today we're going to take a short look at chapter 9 as we move on in uh, HR management. Today we're going to look at talent careers and development. Now what is talent management? Well as you see here on the slide you have strategic talent management which is identifying the most important jobs in a company that provide a long-term competitive advantage and then creating appropriate HR policies to develop employees so that they can effectively work in these jobs. So really what you're doing with strategic talent management, you're taking a look at those critical jobs and you're making sure the people are prepared to fill those jobs. Now it's not just a matter of filling those jobs immediately, you have to do some long range planning. Uh, how many of these individuals, once they are in these jobs, are going to stay for any certain amount of time? So really what strategic talent management does is leverage the KSAOs of your employees to be able to fulfill not only their current jobs, but future critical jobs that you may need them to uh, fulfill uh, as time goes on. Now, maximizing the value of talent management. One of the things that HR is responsible for doing is to develop current employees, or you can hire outside talent. Now, there are pros and cons to each. The current employee knows the organization. He or she recognizes the culture. Uh, they may be more sensitive to the quirks and the way that uh, that organization uh, believes in its values and the way it interacts and so forth. So they would be more likely to know how future initiatives or plans would uh, be received in that organization based on its culture. Outside talent can come in and they bring a fresh set of eyes to the organization. They are looking at it from someone who has not been exposed or enculturated into that organization, so they may be able to offer more innovation and creativity. However, they do not know the organizational culture and values, so uh, even with their ability to look on the outside and bring that outside influence into the organization, they may run into a lot of resistance as they try to enact change and so forth uh, to a company or a culture that's already stable in what it's doing. You can create talent pools and broad competencies in employees. And here you're expanding the scope of their abilities. A talent pool is just having a collection of people who are ready to go to work. Uh, you have trained them and you're putting them on hold uh, so that you can pull from that pool as you need them in different areas. And the broader that they are uh, experienced and trained, the more readily available your talent pool is going to be to fill whatever need you may have in that organization. And then you have short-term talent forecasts that are more likely going to be reliable, at least more reliable than long-term forecasts. So, and that really is common sense. Uh, the shorter the length of time that you are predicting needs, then the more accurate you're probably going to be. 
if you're projecting out three, four years, who knows what could happen uh, in that length of time. So short-term talent forecasts are going to be a little bit more reliable. And you establish a balance between the employees and company's ownership of career development. What does this mean? Well, it means that both take ownership. The employee shows the initiative and motivation to go out and become broader in their scope of, of knowledge, skills, abilities, and other attributes that are important to that company. But also the company owes it to the employee to provide career enhancing opportunities, training, and so forth. So it's a collaboration, it's a partnership that the company and the employee goes into in the career development of an individual. Now we have the scope of talent management and here we see the target jobs and that's identifying the right, right jobs that will be the focus of talent management efforts. And from that you have competency models and they show the KSAOs for various jobs. So you have libraries of competency models as you see here in the slide that are maintained by some companies and these ensure efficient uh, talent planning and what this does is to be able to provide a a database really of competencies and jobs that match up to those competencies for people to be able to perform the tasks that are uh, that are critical uh, for that uh, organization. You don't want to wait until someone leaves the company before you look at replacing them. You want to be able to have people who can come in in the event you lose a person or a person transfers or promoted or demoted or whatever and be able to walk into that position and be able to perform that job. And knowing the competencies that these jobs entail, uh, through a database or whatever you, you maintain in the uh, workplace uh, will help you to be able to identify uh, the right person for that. Now you have high potential individuals. These are the ones that show high promise for advancement in the organization. And people are looking for those individuals uh, in the company. They're looking for people who they can take under their wing and develop, who show that potential. So don't think that uh, uh, management isn't looking, uh, because they are. And for those who show that high potential, they're going to invest in. And the approaches to keep uh, them engaged are to discuss their future with them. I've known several people who have told me that the management teams are talking to them about different positions and offering them opportunities and so forth. So discuss the future with them. Discover their career aspirations. Find out from them. Are you interested in moving up in this company? Uh, would you like to take on more responsibility and so forth? And depending on how they respond, you can start working on them right away. You can uh, give them internships, you can give them development uh, uh, tasks, and uh, you can delegate some authority and responsibility to them a little bit at a time so that incrementally they're becoming more engaged and they are moving more into the organization, not just from an employee standpoint, but from a potential management standpoint. Offer high profile assignments. Uh, do things that are going to make them stand out. Uh, that will motivate them even more. And then offer interaction with senior leaders. Uh, and those are the ones who will uh, come in uh, and work with those who have been proven leaders. It could be executive level. It could be uh, upper management. Uh, but you want to engage them in every level of that organization to make sure that they're going to remain interested in those positions and as a result you've got longevity with that uh, individual. Now succession planning. Succession planning really is just preparing for the inevitable 
reality that people are not going to stay. They're going to be leaving for whatever reason. And succession planning allows you to plan for those departures and fill jobs or positions that are left vacant as a result of those uh, departures. Uh, And departures can come from retirements, transfers, and so forth. And HR should include a well-designed development system for employees. So if you know you're going to be losing people, you need to prepare now. Uh, Even when you are not expecting people to leave, you still need to start preparing. You still need to start identifying people who show that potential and start working with them and placing them in those critical roles that are going to have to be uh, manned uh, once if that person should go or once they go. Define key positions and involve key managers in talent identification. Uh, Not only that, but you want to mentor them and you want to coach them to bring them along and uh, that's just just a matter really of planning ahead. That's all succession planning is. Now development is a term that has really taken prominence over the past decade and development really means we are investing in that employee and their lifespan in that organization. Now, people oftentimes uh, mingle training and development, and the two can coincide, but training is different from development. Training is more of a short-term orientation. I'm going to train you how to do this job. Once you're trained, we're done. Development is an investment in the individual, where you take that individual from the time that they come into the organization until the time that they retire, leave, or whatever, and you start improving upon what they are bringing to that organization in the form of KSAOs. And that's going to take, as I said, an investment in the person, a long-term investment in that person. So development is, as the name implies, you're developing that person over the years. And uh, through that, they can handle a variety of assignments and you're cultivating their capabilities beyond just the job description that they're currently uh, engaged in. Now, developing a needs analysis. Uh, One of the things that HR is uh, tasked with is studying and researching what is needed in that organization, especially when it comes to development. So some of the methods that you can incorporate Uh, as a needs analysis is develop assessment centers and these are collections of test instruments and exercises designed to diagnose an individual's development needs. So from this you've got questionnaires, you have exercises, you have all types of uh, quantitative uh, tools that can help you diagnose the individual and what their needs are in relation to what your needs are going to be in that uh, organization. It can come through psychological testing and it can also come through performance appraisals. So there are different strategies that you can incorporate that entail the needs analysis uh, and you do that by the use of assessment centers. Now, the final slide that we're going to look at today is concerning leadership development. Modeling is just a matter of having them watch you or other leaders, other managers, other, you know, influential people, and see how they operate. Management mentoring is, again, as the name implies, you're mentoring those individuals. Executive education, and there's all types of executive classes out there uh, from a degree, an executive MBA maybe, to uh, uh, workshops and leadership conferences and so forth, and then coaching. And this is really what leadership has evolved into today in learning organizations. Uh, to more of, you're, you're less of a leader and a dictator, to today you're more of a uh, coach, uh, you're a supporter and so forth. 
you remember how uh, uh, Paul was when he first started in ministry. Paul was an outcast. People were afraid of him. But who took him alongside uh, himself and developed him? It was Barnabas. Barnabas encouraged him. Barnabas opened doors for him. And Barnabas was there to support him in those formative uh, periods where Paul was just learning the ropes. And then once Paul was equipped, Paul was off and running. And look at the man that Paul turned out to be. So if we take the biblical model, our job is to mentor, it's to model, it's to teach, and to coach. And if you think about it, that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't do anything out of the ordinary. He just lived life with the people. He had a concern for his disciples. He wanted them to learn the right way, so he showed them how. And uh, he mentored, he encouraged, he chastised when it was necessary. He taught, and then he encouraged and coached them. And uh, through his efforts, 12 people were able to start a revolution that changed the world. So we can take from the Bible, uh, what we see here is really an example of Christ's example and uh, biblical uh, uh, patriarchs and, and heroes of the faith. Uh, we're just taking their uh, leadership, uh, we're taking their example, and we're applying it to these secular terms and uh, ideologies. So this is going to close us out for chapter 9. Uh, make sure you read the whole chapter, and uh, we will continue on tomorrow with chapter 10. Today we looked at the importance of planning for the future through talent development and garnering the resources that our employees can bring to the table as they move up in longevity in the organization. Today we have to be reactive, and we also have to be proactive. Developing our talent is more of a proactive means of being able to stay on top of our competition and staying on top of the uh, uh, ever-changing trends that are taking place in our organizations today. Well, tomorrow we're going to begin with another chapter, so you have a good day and we'll see you then.